find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Hey guys, welcome to the Indie Mayhem Show, number 14. Thanks, Basic Thickness. Try again. Basic Thickness. <laughs> That's his porn <laughs> name. How, hey, how thick was that? Oh, it was just basic. I'm sorry. Get sorry. It out of your system. Get out of your system. This is the this is the straight real. show. This isn't. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to the Indie Mayhem Show number fourteen. <laughs> Still at it. Uh, thanks again to Basic Sickness for that awesome intro. Go check them out at basicsickness.com. Um, and of course, this is the show where uh, a couple of guys that. Love indie wrestling so much that we're involved in it. Like to talk with other people we encounter out here. Of course, myself with Sorgatron Media doing uh, some video work for a few groups here in the Pittsburgh area, the Western PA area, a little bit of Ohio. And my buddy down in San Antonio, fresh off of an, a wrestling extravaganza, which oh, we'll talk boy, about later sorry. in the show. Eamon, uh, the commentator for Inspire Pro Wrestling down there, of course. How you doing, sir? You're recovering, Hi, for one dude. thing. Fantastic. I think my <laughs> hair can really tell the story on that. Um, no, I'm doing great. I'm recovering from a wrestling hangover, which is amazing. Um, but it was, yeah, it's an amazing weekend for professional wrestling. And I'm sure we're going to talk about that uh, mm-hmm. later on in the show. Uh, but we got some good stuff planned ahead. So we do. I'm we do. Pass that off to you, Sorg. We do. A little bit of swap up before that, of course. Uh, you can check out uh, more stuff from this and other, other things we're doing involving wrestling over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Uh, you can find this show, Indie Mayhem Show, on iTunes, on Stitcher, on YouTube, on the iHeartRadio app. Holy crap. And uh, other stuff, including uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show, Super Feed on iTunes and Stitcher. We can catch this in everything wrestling that we're doing around here uh, so you can get the whole picture uh, if you like what we're doing. And uh, also, you can drop us a line to Good times at wrestlingmayhemshow.com 412-206-WMS0 by the way we do have an email for later in this show amen don't let me forget about that one from our, our friend I alex not. uh so we are getting a little bit uh going on there i think it's about shikara if i'm if i'm not mistaken uh and of course you can also drop us a line on the voicemail at 412-206-WMS0 and you can join us here live we do this every tuesday night at 11 p.m eastern time most of the weeks uh and of course we start that at 9 p.m with the wrestling mayhem show and even earlier if you're into other geeky stuff like technology video games movies we go all night long here uh having a lot of fun uh so anyways uh, uh like i said this week we had a little bit of swap up but somebody we were actually you're going to talk to next week so we just bumped it up give you a little more time for this uh and uh, our second pro- well i guess third promoter if we count dombrowski uh of the show uh, uh dr feelbad of the renegade wrestling alliance down here in uh southwestern pa how are you doing this evening sir i'm good fine how are you Awesome, awesome. Uh, so, uh, you know, it, I've, I'm familiar, of course, doing a video with you for the last uh, few years here with the Renegade Wrestling Alliance. Uh, uh, tell us a little bit what people can expect coming out to your shows. Uh, well, uh, where do I start? Um, from humble beginnings, we've grown incredibly over the past five and a half years. Uh, I think the roster is better than ever. Uh, there's a um, women's division, cruiserweight, tag, singles. Uh, primary, the primary focus is on uh, the younger men and women performing the future of this business, which is what I want to focus the company uh, on and continue to focus it on. Uh, but, of course, you'll see a couple legends and uh, a couple of the uh, veterans of the business as well. So I think RWA currently has the best roster, the best mix of uh, old and new men and women, all ages, uh, attracts all ages. Uh, audience is generally the general, if you were to put a rating on it, I'd say PG 13, mm-hmm. 
uh, as, as far as a rating, but uh, just a wide audience, a growing audience. Uh, we just set a record crowd at the West Newton Gym on March 22nd for uh, March to Victory 6. I'm very proud of that, very proud of the roster, and uh, very thankful for all the fans. Awesome, awesome. Uh, I see you just, uh, I believe it's your, your sixth anniversary you guys just, just uh, uh, celebrated here. Uh, and for those who don't know, we actually kind of connected when the humble beginnings a little bit uh, and drifted apart here. So it was kind of cool to be uh, connecting again uh, and, and seeing where you guys are going with the, with the RWA. Um, now, you, you. now, you were somebody. Let, let's talk about that. What was the inspiration for this this show you know you know the rwa you know becoming a thing because i know you're somebody i met at a local another local wrestling promotion uh right. that was definitely you know one of the known fans one of the classic fans you saw at every show in that corner uh as we started coming to every show on the opposite side for some reason uh right. <laughs> you tell us about that and what what why did you guys kind of go, go off on your own direction here fond memories of that by the way well uh I can definitely explain that. I've been a wrestling fan since, uh, well, solid wrestling fan since age 12 and all the way back technically to about age eight, watching it with my grandmother. And uh, uh, I'm going to be dating myself now, but uh, I can even vividly remember Bruno San Martino. I am that old. And I don't mean through videotapes. I'm talking seeing him <laughs> a little bit past his prime. Uh, a lifelong wrestling fan, uh, uh, I just enjoyed it so much that I felt that once I got to know a lot of the wrestlers locally and uh, even some of the bigger names as well, and you've been there, you know exactly what I'm talking about, uh, that I just felt that with the, with the knowledge I felt I had, certainly had a lot to learn, but the knowledge I had at the time as a fan, I thought uh, it's a dream of mine to run my own company. If I don't start it now, which at that time was in my late 30s, uh, around 2008, if I didn't start it by then, I wasn't going to do it at all. And uh, I, uh, you know, started calling talent uh, that I knew, uh, and it just started to build from from a shoestring budget, from literally nothing, to now I feel it is something, and it's it's strong and getting stronger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty much the inspiration for it. Uh, we've uh, you know, talked a bit on this show about the kind of the scene here in Pittsburgh. I know Eamon, uh, we've talked off air and on with some of the guys from 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 down in Texas uh, mm -hmm. about uh, it definitely feels like the area is uh, uh, there's definitely allegiances. There's definitely it feels flooded sometimes. Maybe there may be one too many promotions around here sometimes. And you just you see conflicts develop. Uh, I, you know, I think you're the perfect person that's seen this firsthand to kind of uh, talk about it if you if you're willing to, uh, you know, what you know. It, it, it's a, it, it's tough to, to, to be working a little shoulder to shoulder with people like you know sometimes right up the road actually yes there have been some some conflicts nothing major uh with the other local promotions just simply uh how can i say it's a free country so <laughs> i look mm -hmm. at it this way it, it, it competition's good uh, I actually thrive on a little bit of controversy and competition. Uh, if there's five or six promotions in the area, well, then how can we be unique and different? Mm -hmm. uh, they mm -hmm. should work hard doing the same. Sometimes it gets backbiting. or uh, I I've encountered problems with, uh, well, this wrestler can no longer work for you, feel bad, or this wrestler shouldn't be there, shouldn't be here, and conflicting dates. There's only four good weekends, obviously, out of a month, uh, and I – I try my best not to be right on other companies' dates, but you can't avoid it. Yeah. Um, you know, if there's five or six promotions, but only four weekends, well, you know, do the math. Uh, it's gonna, you're gonna run over. Yeah. Um, so uh, basically, I think that as long as everyone uh, works hard at promoting their company, there is room for all of us. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, maybe the best companies win. We've seen, uh, think about how some have dropped off and have went out of business after a few shows or maybe up to a year they might have survived. Uh, I'm not going to mention any names, but I'm sure you've discussed them. Some just uh, come and go, come and go, or one wrestler gets mad at a promoter, they think they can promote, and uh, or uh, maybe a promoter and booker, and a booker gets mad and he thinks he can promote. But, you know, <laughs> it's um, it's a lot harder than it looks. Uh 
uh, like I said, I, there's no, even when I started this, I knew I had a lot to learn. And believe me, uh, I definitely had a lot to learn and, and had to grow and roll with the punches and so forth. But as far as uh, there being too many, um, as, uh, that's for the fans to decide. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, you go through uh, every county in Pennsylvania across the entire country, and there's a Walmart, Lowe's, and Kmart, you know, uh, right side by side with each other. Uh, and somehow most of those survive because there is something for everyone at at least one of those stores. Likewise, with indie wrestling, there is something for everyone. you got to find the one or the two that you like the most, and the fans will be loyal. And, um, you know, just continue to grow your product and get the word out there. So um, I think uh, the promoters that, uh, that do struggle, have a tough time, need to get flyers and advertisement out, need to worry about their own product and bettering themselves. Uh, instead of worrying about uh, butting heads with competition or, or telling wrestlers where they can and cannot work. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty much what I feel about it. Uh, kind of lend to that. Um, I know, I know uh, for you guys, one thing I, I enjoy about uh, doing your shows is I get to see different talent. Uh, it does feel like uh, sometimes, you know, I see, I, you know, I've seen the same talent between like, you know, Prime and some of these other promotions around here. But I noticed mm-hmm. you guys have, um, you know, it feels like you guys are, 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 are getting out of different pools. I know I see a lot of, uh, I guess, labeled the Ohio guys. Like nice. you're, the, you're the first guys where I saw uh, Jock Stamps and a lot of the, uh, I think it's Ohio State Wrestling, OSW uh, guys, like Juice Jennings. Ohio, Ohio Championship. Or, OCW, Ohio Champ uh, thing. I'm not as familiar believe, with, yeah. with, with what they're doing, but I always see those yeah. guys with the dbi and everything every year um mm-hmm. and uh and and, it, and i believe some other year crew comes in from uh lodi's neck of the woods which i think is down towards carolina if i'm not mistaken. i know i know you know somewhere south so and it seems like yes. there's my understanding is there's a lot of other kind of talent that are coming you know along with them and it definitely makes for a different look a different feel a different you know, just all around a different product that nobody else thank seems you. to be having thank you uh, yes, that's exactly my goal. Uh, one way to prevent, uh, uh, you can't work for me, you can't work for this person. One way to prevent it is I, I do not like to, to tell my roster they can't. I have asked a few, I would prefer that you just work for me or, you know, because if someone can see the same guys just minutes away, you know, I totally agree with, I actually agree with, um, that it is good to have an exclusive roster, but I just don't like the idea of forcing uh, a wrestler's hand. I've mm-hmm. asked it a few times, and sometimes I do get the loyalty. Sometimes I don't. Mm-hmm. Um, but one way to prevent any of that conflict is um, not be afraid to spend a few bucks, uh, invest in your own company, your own interest, and go elsewhere. Uh, you know, and that's why I went to the Carolinas, Tennessee, Kentucky. I would say out of, uh, I think the uh, my roster now is about 25 regulars and at least 12 to 13 of them are uh, not in PA or Ohio or, or uh, even West Virginia. So as we've really branched out and I'm going to keep it that way and continue to move in that direction. So mm-hmm. and that way uh, you have uh, kind of have an exclusive roster that way without all the politics. Excellent. So excellent. So uh, one question we asked, I think we dipped a little bit into it uh, one way or another, but if anything else, uh, kind of pops to your mind and kind of what is at this point, we say this to the talent, to the other people work in other <laughs> jobs, but as a promoter, what is the best, the best thing about being a promoter, uh, in the, you know, six, five, six years you've been doing this and uh, what's kind of the worst thing that you keep running into or have run into well, at one me, time? Oh, well, okay. Let me cover the, let's get the bad out of the way first mm-hmm. and then I'd, I'll, mm-hmm. I'll end the comment on the good. I'd say the worst part of being a promoter is, uh, and, and there's not a lot of it bad. I like I like uh, being challenged. It does get challenging in the sense of sometimes you will have the conflict of a wrestler um, be, kind of being forced to maybe, you know, well, I don't know if I can work here anymore, feel bad. That's yeah. been a problem. Yeah. Then it sets you back and having to rethink your your uh, your entire lineup for your card or, or a couple months ahead. I try to have a, a general idea several months ahead of what's going on uh, and what I want to get across. Uh other bad things about it, um, I love it so much that uh, I, I, I hate to criticize. Uh, you know, sometimes at the mercy of the weather, uh, you know, uh, 
maybe being a small independent, I, I put, I do pay the, the wrestlers, I think better than most of the independents. Uh, again, it's not by no means is it a living or, or no. can I afford a big contract? Of hey, course. And, it, just, it, and that's one thing about the exclusivity. I mean, that's, that's kind of a, you know, you can't say exclusive when, right. You know, there's no contracts exactly yeah so you know i try to pay the i try to pay the men and women that that break their bones and their bodies to to entertain us i'm still just i'm still just as much a fan as i always was and i don't think there's any shame in that um Mm -hmm. if i wasn't a fan i wouldn't be doing this um and i want to i i just uh i feel they deserve a little more compensation so i haven't been able to perhaps put into lighting and fog machines and special effects and not even a commercial so much. I haven't been able to advertise like I want because I want to pay the talent first and give the RWA fans what I feel is the best talent in local indie wrestling. So the downside of it is not that I'm uh, by no means am I upset with paying them. I'm just saying that that's the focus. So Mm -hmm. at this point in time, now here's where we go into the positives. RWA is beginning, I believe to leap forward. We just set a record crowd. We just did our first commercial, which uh, I want to thank you for. Uh, and now we're going into salute the troops. And here's here's what's good about indie wrestling. Here's what is great about what these men and women do. They will entertain you and nearly kill themselves out there for the crowd. Travel town to town, and w- sometimes only for ten and twenty bucks. Sometimes in some indie promotions, they don't get paid at all, and yet they do it day in and day out, night after night the training and the traveling thrown in. Here's the good part. For two and a half to three hours, and I know this is a cliche old saying, but you can forget about your problems and you can have some good, clean fun for sometimes 10, 12 bucks and and literally can do charities and benefits with wrestling. Uh, this is uh, the salute to troops is the, the biggest undertaking, the biggest thing that my company has done to date in the whole five and a half years, but I have done a few benefits and charities prior to this, but this is definitely the biggest, the best, the most advertised, the best roster that I've ever had. I'm proud of all of them. And uh, that's the positives of pro wrestling. What you can do to give back to your community, to, to charities, military, make a wish. The list goes on and on and on from WWE on down to the independence of the incredible power and force that is, pro wrestling with the slightest edge indie pro wrestling because it's so much more up close and personal with the fans mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that's the positives of rwa and indie wrestling in general and that's where i'm at now uh where we're at now and i'm very proud of it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it feels like a lot of the influences um you know uh i i, I often label some of your uh local <sighs> compatriots as 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 indie riffic if, if, the, if we can claim that, uh, you know, because of the, you know, they, they reach out to, you know, the guys we're seeing, you know, I know some, some San Antonio guys that come, you know, the, the who's who, you know, you, you know, of course that's a great super indie t- tournament they do down there and everything. But I feel like you guys have more of an old school mentality in the booking. Yes. Like, that's, that's what I get from that. And, and, and I think for the crowd you guys have, that really fits. Uh, even if it isn't a internet fan, you know, uh, uh, kind of mentality behind it um i mean it's shown by the people are coming down there every week or month i'm sorry yeah yes thank you that well the target audience is actually and 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 smart promoting is the target audience is anyone and everyone Mm -hmm. and there is some like i said there are there are some uh uh obviously the new and the and the young and the and the rookies that are coming in but you're right uh the at, at rwa's core is old school and old school feel combined with new. And I think that's what makes us, makes us uh, increasingly popular as well where it's growing because there really truly is uh, something for everyone at RWA. At least we certainly try to provide that. Mm-hmm. So uh, we do have a question from the chat room. Sherry is in there. Uh, she says, do you have one or more wrestlers that have uh, started with RWA that are still on the roster? I know some people that have been there since I've started coming around. Well, uh, if I understand the question, do I still have a few that are on the original roster? Yeah. Yes. Uh, actually, uh, Steel City Prodigy Ryan Mitchell, I, I 
kind of include the entire year of 2009, like some people might have debuted a few months in. Mm -hmm. So going back to our first year, uh, Ryan Mitchell is an original, um, still city prodigy, fantastic talent. Uh, Chris Taylor has returned. Obviously, he's the main event. He and Mitchell are the main event for Salute the Troops. Uh, yes, yeah, so there are still several uh, original roster members from the from our first year. Awesome. So awesome. Uh, which is a good. That's a good feeling as well. There are some that have stayed very loyal to the product. Uh, so definitely. I, I definitely don't want to. I want to make sure we get in here talking about uh, Salute the Troops, your big show. Yes. Uh, I'll be down there filming, of course, as usual. Something something different. This is a. I I haven't seen you leave the. West Newton Gymnasium for a while, and it's pretty cool seeing it on no, this scale, uh, and a lot of cool stuff going on. So, uh, t tell me about the the you know what's the idea behind the show? Well, salute to troops. I'm I'm going to be long winded here if you don't mind, because uh, I like to get a lot of information out uh, about this. Uh, motivation behind it is uh, to just give a thank you to everyone that has served in all branches of military. Mm -hmm. So to whoever sees this and, and uh, what we want to get the word out on, Saturday, April 19th, 7 p.m. bell time at California University's Convocation Center, we will be presenting Salute to Troops 1 because we are already thinking of Salute to Troops 2. I'm going to make that clear as well. Mm -hmm. um, that uh, anyone that has military, their old military ID, current or, or past, veteran or otherwise, could be uh, uh, someone that's on leave or whatever, Anyone that is currently or formerly has served our country gets a free ticket in our general admission, not the floor, as I, I got to pay the bills to. And um, I certainly don't expect wrestlers to work for free coming from the Carolinas. Um, uh, but I, I will make a note. I'm not going to say who because I, I don't know if they would want me to reveal. But several wrestlers have waived their pay and have donated it to the post 9-11 post-September 11th scholarship fund, which nice. I, I want to also nice. indicate that, that 10% of all ticket sales, all ticket sales, and 100% of all sponsorship money goes to this scholarship so that um, military can further their education for those who qualify. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, additionally, general admission is, uh, adult is $12. General admission children under age of 13 is $6. And there's only one row of floor seats left. We're almost sold out of floor, which is fantastic. It's our greatest pre-sales in the history of RWA. Uh, floor is almost sold out. So, so anyone that is hearing this or seeing this, uh, get your floor seats now. Get with me soon. Uh, floor seats are $15 per person. Um, and uh, our sponsors, we uh, the, uh, the scholarship had to be met. Uh, $2,500 had to be met as part of the contract for this um, to raise sponsorship money. Otherwise, if I didn't raise it, it would have had to come out of ticket sales or come out of our WA account. Mm -hmm. I'm so proud to announce that we have just reached our goal this week uh, from Duke of Oil in Carroll Township, uh, Nichols Funeral Home, Mariscotti Funeral Home, World Kitchen in Charleroi, the Gaming Dungeon in Washington, Krauss Department Store in Brownsville, and Tax Pro Solutions, uh, the tax man, <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. all donated uh, to this uh, to this scholarship. And just a couple of days ago, we have already reached the 2,500 goal. Nice. So uh, a lot of businesses are are, are sponsoring this. Um, are a record breaking amount of pre sales. Uh, so I'm just thrilled with this show. Uh, hopefully, we can get 500, 800, 1,000 people. Um, and I'm, I'm very thankful and grateful uh, for California University's Convocation Center for uh, allowing us to bring a night of entertainment and a night of thanks as well to our military and to our fans. And it looks like it touches home for a lot. You're featuring on your website here, and I'll show a few pictures here in a second, um, that a lot of your roster actually are you know, former military uh, and, and, and representing yes. on the show. Yes, I'm very proud of him. Uh, if I forget any wrestler, I apologize, but uh, Danny Abel, Ryan Mitchell, Lodi, Scotty Matthews, referee Bo Browning, uh, Zubov, Brock Singleton, a uh, uh, significant amount of, uh, of the roster has served 
our great country. So I'm, I'm just, I'm so proud on all levels, roster, the fans, California university, the whole event, top to bottom. This is the most thrilling in the most thrilling month, uh, most exhausting month as well, but the, certainly the most thrilling month uh, that I've ever had in this business. And I just can't, I can't, I myself can't wait for this show. Awesome. Can't wait for it. Awesome. Uh, it sounds Thank pretty you. cool. It's bringing uh, uh, wrestling down to uh, a new area. Uh, I don't think there's a lot happening in Cal U. I saw a couple shows around there a couple years ago, but uh, really cool to be doing something on this scale and, and getting out there. And it sounds like you're doing awesome. Uh, yes. uh, Alex, who uh, you may know has the name on the back of the DVD cover, is from California, says he's excited about the show, <laughs> and he's in California. Uh, so... <laughs> Um, hopefully he's already working on the DVD cover. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and I just check in the chat there. So excellent. So everybody can check it out. Where can people check out more, uh, about RWA? Okay. A couple of things, uh, for tickets, they can call directly RWA at 724-263-5830 or the California university convocation center box office at 724-938-4600. And tickets, tickets are on sale around the clock if people call me directly at RWA. I'll take phone calls day and night. Uh, I want to get the word out. Uh, I want to make this night the best that RWA has ever had to offer. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, and if I don't take your call, leave a message. I will get with you on tickets or tell you where you can purchase them. Um, and uh, that's uh, it. Just like I said, let's let's knock it out of the park for the military and the fans alike is what my goal is. Awesome. And of course, if, you. if you're not in the area, want to check out what RWA is all all about. Uh, you can check them out on YouTube, uh, YouTube.com/slash RWA Pro. Of course, linked over at RWALive.com as well. Uh, yeah. There's a few. There's teasers for the DVDs as well as some flashback uh, uh, matches, a few packages, so you can see. Uh, what's going on there and of course we have the dvds and digitals including this next one the salute to troops will be available at sorgatronmedia.com um so you can go check it out and we, we have people from everywhere checking them out uh, I, i'm getting orders from california we've sent them to nice i think i think i sent some of your dvds to australia once um, i think so so i mean it's <laughs> it's it, that's so weird right <laughs> it, it is in a way yeah it's, it's um uh, but hey, it's it, it's it's great. It's it's out there, and that's what's important. So exactly, exactly. Uh, uh, also, uh, if you don't mind, I, I sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. No May I? Uh, I like to announce even a couple of the matches. Uh, oh please! If that's uh, uh, the main event is boot camp match, grudge match, no disqualification, no holds barred, false count anywhere between Steel City Prodigy Ryan Mitchell and Mr. Chris Taylor. Uh, Long standing rivalry there now. Um, that's the main event. We will, prior to the main event, have an induction ceremony where we will be, uh, where there'll be, um, uh, an oath ceremony for inducting new officers to the military. Also, at some point, there'll be a color guard. Of course, in the beginning of the show, national anthem will be sung. Uh, and some additional matches, Jesse Bell, Smothers versus Serafini. And, uh, I'm giving you a little bit exclusive here. For the first time ever in the history of RWA, between those two ladies, there will be a women's title. Nice. No, nice. no tournament, no battle royal, just those two right from the get-go, mm -hmm. and I was saving that for tonight. So that anyone hearing this first first announcement, women's title match, Chessie Bell Smothers versus Serafini. Uh, and additionally, a very important tag team title match, three-way tag title uh, for the tag championships, current champions, Generation Dead, which is Gory and Raver, very proud of them. Very oh, exciting they're, team. They're, they're a wicked awesome tag team. Just, I mean, that's just uh, uh, totally a fan just to watch them as well. Uh, uh, I'm in awe of what they can do. And I'm not bragging or just saying that because they're in my company, but I'm just very proud of them as a tag team. Uh, they will be defending the titles against some very stiff competition. That would be Ashton Amherst and Ryan Rain, which is exclusive. And then also Lodi and Brady Pierce. And let it be known that Lodi is the current RWA heavyweight champion, plus all the experience he's had through the years, 20, plus, 20 years plus career 
in TNA and WCW. Additionally, Brady Pierce is our current RWA regional champion. So you have four current champions in that one tag match, as well as Ashton Amherst and Ryan Rain being former tag champs, Ashton Amherst being former heavyweight champ. So it's very, it needs to be noted, all six competitors currently hold or have held a title in RWA. Wow. So, yeah, so those are, those are the three key points. Cruiserweight title will be defended as well. Still working on some details with that match. There will be a singles match between Scotty Matthews and William the Hammer Roberts, as well as an additional tag team match earlier in the card. Details are being worked out on, on that as well. So just stay tuned and go to rwalive.com and keep watching Facebook and so forth for further updates. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so go check them out, rwalive.com. Uh, salute to Truce. You'll be hearing about it on Twitter, uh, at RWA Pro on Twitter, and, of course, Facebook as well. So go look them up and, and keep informed. So and if you don't mind, uh, we will be actually talking about a little bit of WrestleMania here, at least indie side of it. If you don't mind sticking around. No, I'll stick around a little bit. I, I appreciate being here. Awesome. Uh, so, a- you. Eamon, you went on an adventure this weekend. Boy, did I ever. He's <laughs> through cover and he'll listen to him. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, no, I was at WrestleMania this weekend. Uh, and as we mentioned last week on the Indie Mayhem show, uh, tons of indie wrestling stuff happened during WrestleMania weekend, like it always does. And I went to a lot of it, a whole, whole lot of it. Uh, all really fun. Uh, I mentioned at the end of this uh, past week's Wrestling Mayhem show that you can check out uh, that you know, there's a lot of wrestling, Sorg. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of, lot of wrestling, and, and I didn't know how to handle it all. But um, it was really fun. Uh, I guess I can go through sort of my schedule uh, for this past weekend. I went to starting with uh, Ring of Honor on Friday. Uh, they had their Super Card of Honor event. Uh, this was very cool to me because I've been uh, – my only experiences with Ring of Honor live uh, were there are two events that they've done in the past in uh, San Antonio, which were very different, um, I think, to normal Ring of Honor events. That's not particularly for any reason other than, you know, they weren't – there weren't big shows necessarily. They, they had great matches and great talent. It just what – didn't being, a te- being in Texas where I guess they aren't predominantly, you know, known for – and not being one of their bigger shows, it, it felt almost lesser than. Uh, this show felt like a Ring of Honor show. There was a lot of great stuff on the card. The crowd uh, was crazy into everything. Um, and, and you had a lot of people that I think had followed Ring of Honor a bit a bit more, probably. Uh, so it aided into everything they were doing. Because there was a lot of like storyline progression stuff that they were doing. Uh, on that show a lot of really great matches uh, uh i didn't get to see the main event ladder war because i had to leave for a prior engagement uh but the semi-main event of kevin steen versus michael elgin was seriously really killer uh, a lot of people were saying it was a, uh what could many could be considered a match of the year for all right so um that was super fun really great matchup a uh, fun thing about that match though and fun thing i learned uh, i learned about on the drive back um we mentioned, I think, last week on the show about uh, like sort of them doing it in Louisiana uh, and how Louisiana's wrestling scene, I think, is a bit weird in a sense. Uh, some of the rules and the mandates in place. Mm-hmm. Uh, apparently, the pile driver is a banned move in Louisiana. Really? Uh, to where you can get basically fined, or if, uh, I believe they they also have the ability if it's you know if it used, they can pretty much shut down a show um, because of it. And Kevin Steen, uh, who is known for using the package pile driver, I believe Michael Elgin busted it out as well during this match. And uh, yeah, so and and I think Brian Alvarez tweeted about how they bust out pile drivers in a state where you can get fined uh, for uh, for those moves. So I don't know. I'm assuming Ring of Honor uh, did some pre-planning with that, hopefully, um, to uh, ensure that it was okay that they were able to use those. Um, but yeah, um, overall, I think it was a really fun show. The uh, top to bottom of the card was really great. Uh, really not a bad match in the card. Uh, Ray Rowe, who's a friend of the Wrestling Mayhem show, did an amazing job in the uh, three-way tag that he was in, uh, along with uh, Hanson, uh, who he uh, lost top prospect tournament to, who I was really impressed by. Um, first time really getting to see and, and really get to see a, a full picture of him. And he was really great. Um, so I encourage you, uh, anyone to definitely follow him as well. 
uh, a lot of great stuff. Uh, a couple of talents that actually will be – there's a talent from that event that we were actually getting into for the Indie Mayhem Challenge uh, for this week. So I'll, I'll save that for later. Uh, but like I said, I had to miss the main event because I had to get to another event, sort of indie-related. It involves a couple people that we've had on the Mayhem Show in the past. And that was the world premiere of Meet Me There, which is the movie – uh, written by Brandon Stroud, my uh, co-worker and good friend from Inspire Pro Wrestling, uh, and Lex Librand, who directed the film and also does our technical stuff uh, over at uh, Inspire Pro. Uh, they premiered their movie in New Orleans, uh, Meet Me There, a horror film starring none other than uh, WWE star Dustin Rhodes. Uh, and Dustin Rhodes was there at the event, uh, as well as uh, Dusty Rhodes, which was kind of crazy. Uh, I got to watch a horror film, uh, uh, few seats away from dusty roads like that was kind of crazy um but it was a great film uh i i i'm not a big horror uh uh follower and it really it's a it's a scary film but it's also just a really good film um uh it's really well put together and i i encourage anyone uh, uh if it's in your area because uh, i know they're uh, making their scenes and then and, and they're going around with the movie uh, to a couple different places now uh, to check it out because it's really, really great. And they put a lot of time and effort into it. And Dustin Rhodes is amazing in it. Uh, he needs more more roles. Uh, he's really, really good. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, yeah, that was super fun. Uh, and then the next night uh, we continued with a lot of the indie stuff. I went to Shimmer uh, in uh, New Orleans at the Tul- at uh, Tulane University, which if you've not seen this, so it's a giant, like really nice uh, – uh, uh, I would say Harvard-esque uh, university, uh, and and it was basically in their uh, uh, auditorium. Um, so the seating was actually the the ring was actually on a stage, like basically. And I'm, when I say auditorium, it's ba- like an auditorium where you would see like a play. Uh, so yeah, the I ring think was, I saw. Did I see your Instagrams? Like you, you and Brandon were were Instagramming this, right? Yeah, it, it was very weird. It was on a stage. And the stage had like maybe like three rows of seating around three sides of the ring, mm-hmm. and the rest was sort of the auditorium seating, um, which and, was it was uh, cool. It was different. It was also very weird because we were like maybe six rows in the auditorium seating, um, which made it very weird because based off of how high the ring was, you can't you couldn't really see the mat. I noticed the comment: "You can't see anybody's <laughs> feet in this match." You can't. You couldn't see anyone's feet, really. Um, and and when anyone would get sort of slammed, it's almost like they sort of went into like blades on. It's, it looked as almost like the ring like fell in, um, which it didn't. But uh, it was super cool. Um, a lot of talents I saw for the first time. This is my first ever like full uh, full scale women's wrestling show uh, that I've been to live which was really great. They had a lot of talents uh, from uh, international lands. That really impressed me a lot. I believe uh, a couple of talents from Scotland, Japan, obviously. Um, I think an underrated, really good match on that card was uh, Hikaru Shida, who's a big uh, Joshi competitor in Japan, taking on Evie from New Zealand. Very great match. I would, highly, I would highly recommend anyone to seek it out because it's really, really good. Um, there was also a lot of, there were a lot of debuts at that show. Uh, another talent that really impressed me was, uh, Vanessa Craven, uh, from, uh, Canada, who is a beast of a woman. She's gigantic, um, wrestling Kaylee Ray from Scotland, who's definitely a much smaller competitor and it made for a really good match, really good, uh, clash of styles. Um, and then, uh, I definitely think match of that night, uh, underrated, really good match was lo- uh, local talent to Texas and really has been making her waves all across the world. And that's Athena, uh, making her return to shimmer from injury against, uh, Candice LeRae, who many people may know from PWG in California, really great match. Um, just really, really phenomenal stuff. Um, so I would encourage anyone to seek out that show because it's in, I believe you can get it. It was on iPay-Per-View, um, and I believe you can order the video on demand. So um, go check that out because it was a super fun event. Uh, a lot of really cool stuff uh, from that. And we actually had to leave before the main event for that show to get to WrestleCon, uh, which was uh, a – basically they had WrestleCon uh, Saturday and Sunday with you know all the signings and that. But we went for the actual super show event uh, for WrestleCon. Uh, really, really cool stuff. A lot of – different talents, a lot of mix of, 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 of people and groups. Um, got to see a lot of people uh, at that event. Um, uh, an amazing opening three-way uh, between uh, uh, Cedric Alexander, who competes for Ring of Honor, 
Um, Andrew Everett, who is the uh, uh, Sorg you've seen actually before as the former Chiva kid uh, from National oh, Pro yeah. Wrestling Day. Uh, and another competitor named Trevor Lee, who were really, really spectacular. Uh, and I want to find out where these guys are, you know, are from because I think promotions would definitely be seeking these guys out. They seriously impressed uh, in the opener. Um, Bad Influence from TNA was there. Uh, they had a lot of fun stuff. Uh, underrated, really good match on the card. Uh, Jeff Jarrett against Colt Cabana. Wow. Um, I forget how much I miss Jeff Jarrett. Uh, it's weird. <laughs> I never thought I'd uh, hear that. Yeah. Uh, he was doing the heel stick. He had a Karen Jarrett with him, who is another person I seriously miss. I, I, I have to honestly respect her, like being someone that, you know, back when she obviously was the wife of Kurt Angle, uh, basically married a wrestler, wasn't really a part of wrestling to begin with. Mm -hmm. And she became a part of it and she got really good at it. Um, she's a really awesome ballet and she uh, was a really comedic foil, I think, in this whole match. And Jeff Jarrett's got that really old school sort of Memphis style. Like it's, it's, it's really fun. And he did great with Cole Cabana. Uh, really, really fun stuff. There was a three-way between Chris Hero, Michael Elgin, and Drew Gulak. It's amazing, really, how many times these guys wrestled this weekend, <laughs> some of these guys. Um, to the point where some of them like literally wrestled on a show, left, like had to obviously leave before the uh, show ended to wrestle on another show. Like it, it was crazy how many times certain people like just sort of wrestled this weekend. Um, really, really insane. Uh, there was a lot of a lot of really interesting stuff on that show. A lot of different names, a lot of different matches. Um, I will say the only I think weird part and and sort of I think dud I guess you could say sadly uh, from that from that event was the main event, which was a uh, Masada against DJ Hyde uh, in a CZW match. Mm. Uh, ultra violent sort of rules and i don't know if it was the crowd getting burnt out or, or what was happening like i don't think a lot of people were into it uh i personally think it was really weird to kind of put that as the main event um i don't know i personally uh, and i've seen masada many a times before he's a local in texas and he's really great um so i i very weird showing i think um i, I don't think the crowd the crowd was sort of and it was weird. The crowd, I think, was a very pro CZW crowd um, because I, we were waiting to get into the building, and there were a lot of like CZW chants, and I saw like a lot of CZW like merch uh, being worn by people like all around, and and yeah, I don't think it was a weird, weird, weird main event. Um, I think one of the few I think duds of the weekend, um, but other than that, it was super fun. Uh, really cool to see all that, and and. We sort of talked about it uh, last week, but the idea that this is really – like it's not just WrestleMania in a sense. You have WrestleMania, you have Hall of Fame, you have access. But it really just is an event, I think, to celebrate wrestling. It's, uh, it was really just phenomenal to see so much wrestling, so many – so much young talents uh, mixed with some of the older talents and, and a lot of – you know, I, th I think the opportunities were gained by people – through competing this weekend and 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 there was a lot of i think star making opportunities and i think especially at this wrestlemania like the testament of seeing i think some of the guys that were really on top like your daniel bryans your cesaros um these guys could be you know the, these daniel bryans and cesaros were wrestling on these indie shows during wrestlemania weekends like what like five six years ago so you never know i i think you know, this there's definitely a bright future when it comes to uh, the world of professional wrestling if we see sort of these guys that are in it. So I'm excited. I'm excited uh, coming off of this weekend. Awesome. And yeah, I know, like, when I went last year, uh, again, I, I experienced a syndicate show and mostly WrestleCon with the, all the wrestling happened behind a current curtain not too far from me. Um, mm. Did you, I mean, did you find, like, there's always seems to be a different air at these shows because in the end, whether they're, you're there to see indie wrestling, you're there for WrestleMania. And, and it feels like, um, and I've often seen before when you go to, you know, I've gone to the gathering of juggalos and there's a bunch of people, like-minded people into a thing gathering in mass. And it's something special happening. Um, it, 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 did you get a similar air about, you know, your travels over the weekend? Yeah, it felt, um, it felt really big. Like I, I, I noticed just like, you you saw a lot of people and, and I think me even like being in Texas, like the mass of people that like 
um, I was seeing for the first time that are people I've heard of on indie on indie wrestling shows and and but like everyone was there like even people I know plenty of people that also like maybe wrestled once or like didn't even, didn't wrestle that weekend that still came because they it's it's an experience it's a it's it's something you need to be a part of I think um, there was a real atmosphere to the whole weekend I think excellent excellent. Um... Cool. And man, I'm looking at WrestleMania next year, to be honest. <laughs> uh, just that experience and be able to go. And, uh, and I have family by where it's going to be out there in California. So I might have to make that trip. So I'm putting money in my piggy bank now. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so, of course, every week we uh, have a challenge on YouTube uh and uh, a pretty good one uh one of one of my favorites seeing uh, uh over in iwc and other places uh in my travels is anthony niece tony niece yes. uh so uh this uh, and i think this is somebody that you well you probably saw him in tna of course but i don't think you got to see a lot of his indie work before uh hitting up this playlist um yeah i i, I actually got to see him uh, uh and in the crowd of the shimmer show uh, uh didn't get to see him compete i know he did compete on the dragon gate uh and evolve events this weekend mm -hmm. um but yeah i love anthony muse uh he is a definitely i think a testament to i think the benefits of, or the the appeal to independent wrestling is to the idea of seeing things you never you wouldn't expect to see and he's definitely because you look at him and you sort of expect one style uh because he's a very jack dude like he's in great shape mm -hmm. um uh looks to be you know like i he's looks that you would expect him to be like more of a powerhouse wrestler but he's very much he's got the high flying style like he's he, he he's got a lot of really cool stuff in his arsenal um and he's been wrestling now for dragon gate for pwg for tons of stuff like that so um yeah i i, I love me some anthony niece i i think he's gonna <laughs> if if he hasn't already i think he's gonna be one that's definitely gonna break out mm -hmm. uh yeah and, and, and let's say he had a go on tv a bit um already so uh it, it was good to see and now <laughs> here is actually we have one of him and adam cole of all people uh, in one of the, one of the clips that you uh included here he does a ridiculous uh what is that a 450 he does yeah it's it's crazy um the the thing that dude can do or is really really spectacular mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um so uh, great to be able to see him up here locally i think he is a uh, uh, from the new york area so i think we're definitely uh uh, kind of blessed to have them kind of in the uh, in our area up here. So, awesome. Uh, so, who do we have for the next week? Next week uh, is a guy that I just talked about uh, for my indie travels that I think you need to check out. Another high flyer and another one that is definitely one you got to keep your eye on. Uh, Sorg, like I mentioned, you saw him, uh, and many of you may have saw him back uh, at WrestleCon as Chiba Kid, but he mm -hmm. is Andrew Everett. So good. Um, he was in a six-man tag at Ring of Honor with ACH to Darius Thomas against uh, BJ Whitmer, Jimmy Jacobs, and Adam Page. And good God, did he impress. <laughs> it was really spectacular. Uh, he is an amazing high flyer. I think he's won the WWE. I, I could honestly see in WWE. Um, uh, and he's still very young, so I, I, he's definitely going to grow with age. Um, so uh, he's he's definitely a talent to look out for. He's he's wrestling in so many other places so uh i encourage you to check him out uh andrew everett is the challenge for this week uh if you want to go participate in the challenge you can go to a playlist that we've composed at youtube.com slash wrestling mayhem show with featuring matches of andrew everett um but if you don't you're not limited to the playlist you can watch whatever you want uh but when you watch it either tweet us at mayhem show or send us an email to good times at wrestling mayhem show.com uh, to go uh, tell us what you think of Andrew Everett. We'll read them on the show um, so you can get your voice heard. We can spread the word of independent wrestling and independent wrestlers. Uh, and we can have a fun time. So, yeah, that's uh, this week's challenge. And I know, uh, Derek, you've been uh, uh, talking in the yeah. chat room, and I, I, I got a tweet about this too. Yeah, um, about the Ultimate Warrior. Yeah, kind of breaking news. I know it yeah. doesn't fit with this show, but apparently the Ultimate Warrior has passed. Uh, it's it's now on WWE.com confirmed. Uh, no details about what happened. Unbelievable. Uh, that's especially now. You know, uh, that's that's crazy. I I, I fear hearing why <laughs> at this point, um, especially after I know earlier on the show on the Mayhem show we were talking about you know. All the great stuff with you know Robertson Hall coming back and you know the recent right. with the gown and everything. 
Um, but to, to hear this after, you know, finally coming back in the Hall of Fame and last night on Raw, uh, is, is there any details? Have you guys found any? Uh, uh, I have not. Um... Uh, uh, Lindsay's right beside me on, a, on another computer like I typed. Uh, it's on Wikipedia, and uh, Bobby and Hot Wheels are correct that it's also on the WWE dot com but uh, no details on cause i think those, the, uh, those the, it was originally from what i could it. tell was broken from triple h on twitter yeah, actually. yeah. that's what I, I got yeah. but i saw nothing else finally ww.com seems like it has something uh the first thing i saw was triple h saying saddened to announce the passing of ultimate warrior icon of friend simply to his wife dan and dan and yeah and, and, the and i think a lot of people sort of assume well maybe it's you know someone hacked or something but I believe that was Stephanie my first thing that's why it. i didn't want to say anything yeah uh, yeah i believe stephanie's also uh tweeted it yeah and now that it being on wwe.com yeah it's definitely up uh, there now so um and it's a uh, breaking news on the front of the page we don't have any graphics or anything well, and if it if it's true it's so sad that uh, it, it's it, that's like stuff that movies are made out of that that uh, to, to have that achievement and and, and to be accepted uh, and, and within a day or two after that, to, to pass after such a great moment is so, uh, that, that's heartbreaking, really. That's, that's, uh, that kind of stuff really is, is, uh, they, uh, just sad side of, of, of this business too, you know? I mean, they were so quick to put it up that the default thumb text here is still on the site, uh, from, from their, uh, from their designer. Uh, so, I mean, that's, uh, yeah, they, they taught, they, they shoved somebody out of bed to put this up. It looks like yeah, mm -hmm. uh, that's crazy, crazy. Um, but uh, we'll hear about this. I'm sure details talk about it next week on the Mayhem Show. Uh, uh, we'll be tweeting about. We'll be on Facebook and everything. Uh, so, uh, so happy to have you here. Feel bad, but sad, sorry about the the sad note going out of here. No, that is that is that is just uh, um, horrible. And, and 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 yet again, if it's true, if it gets confirmed. But it's something like this, we hope it's not true. But if it's confirmed yet again, someone uh, too young uh, in this business, even if you're even if you're not even sixty, that's still too young uh, to mm -hmm. pass. That's you know, it's just sad. Fifty six, right? Fifty six. I think I think fifty six or fifty seven. I'm pretty yeah. sure, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. Uh, uh, WWE.com's reporting fifty four, actually. Fifty four. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's nuts. Nuts. Uh, well, on a low note, uh, we have been uh, your Indie Mayhem show for Amon's at Amon to please. Uh, Dr. Fieldbad, I don't think you're on Twitter, but you're at Mayhem, I'm sorry, RW Pro on Twitters uh, for the Fed. Uh, we're over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, iTunes, Stitcher, uh, YouTube, <coughs> and you drop us a line at Good Times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, 412-206-WMS0. Uh, so until next week, uh, go support some indie wrestling. We'll see you then. Never said I was a gangster or a thug, but I'm an animal. Peanut for the taste of the pork. Sing, 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 you know how I act now.